Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be looking at some more fan-made Pokemon from the Mojave region. This is a region based on the U.S. West Coast. Uh, so through this device here, it looks like we can power up our Pokemon and actually change their type. So let's take a bit of a closer look at that. So it says, with the full force of Ultra Power, some Pokemon achieve new forms. So through the device that we saw, you can infuse your Pokemon with Ultra Energy and raise their power and actually change their typing as well. Uh, sharply raises the two highest stats of the user, which sounds pretty overpowered, and changes them into one of two types depending on the species of the original Pokemon. So first up we have Cactike, our grass starter. Uh, says here, Cactike are infamously lazy. They will stay in one place hiding from the desert sun. When they are angered, they will shake their arms, launching loose thorns in all directions. Groups are often called gangs. Also, they just roll up on people. This guy's kind of cute. I like him to start out. All right, and he evolves into Cacklaw. So for this one, Cacklaw can be difficult to train as they will often disregard commands and prefer to laze about in the shade. When they fight, they can throw spines with pinpoint precision. Interesting. Okay, Pin Needle is definitely going to be a standard move for this guy, it sounds like. All right, and for our final form, we have Cactex, Grass Steel. Interesting. Cactlaw that evolve into Cactex are forced to abandon the gang, wandering the vast lands of Mojave alone. They use their hollow fingers to shoot out steel thorns at amazing speeds. They often wander the deserts looking for injustice for them to put a stop to. <laughs> it is believed that they were once venomous. Interesting. Okay, I like him. He's just kind of like a Wild West outlaw kind of guy. All right, and we have our first altar version here for our starter. Uh, Fire Steel now, so this is interesting. So, trading in its grass type for fire type, altar energy in its body supplies it with not only boosted stats and a new type, but new abilities as well. When it changes into its altar form, Cactex becomes a bandit. So we switch sides here, that's interesting. Capable of shooting chunks of molten metal at incredible speeds. I, I like the... I, I like the play here, switching from the, the good guy to the bad guy with the typing and like the classic uh, cowboy showdown. Very, very cool. All right, now we have Fubre as our fire starter. I love this little dude already. Fubre are known for their stubborn and hot-headed nature. They will fly into a rage at the slightest thing. Fubre are known to live very closely with family and make strong bonds. Fuego for fire and bray. So yeah, wait. Oh, fue bray. Intr okay, I like that. That sounds better. I like that even more. Uh, yeah, I'm always. I've always been a fire starter guy, so I, I'm instantly biased on this one. Next up, we have stubborn. I am loving the names of these guys already here in this uh, evolution line. Stubborn are extremely quick to anger, making the training of one difficult. They are always mad and sometimes only appear to be less mad <laughs> the hotter their flames the angrier one is yeah just instant instant win for him I'm, I'm really curious to see the final form here all right in our final form we have flame mule okay fire fairy type interesting typing I like it flame mule are said to evolve only one stubborn release all their anger so we finally calm down he's been through therapy he's looking a lot better now they have a calming demeanor and tend to the weak. The flames that sprout from, from them are very pure, demonstrating control of what they burn with excellent precision, being careful to not harm the surroundings they live in. You know, I kind of wish he stayed angry. I'm curious to see what that would have looked like. Maybe that's going to be the altar version. Let's take a look. All right, and for our altar, we have a water fairy. Looks like he got sad instead of angry here. So, uh, trading in its fire typing for water, alter energy in its body supplies it not only with boosted stats, but a new type as well. Yep. So when changes to its alter form, flame yield becomes quiet and reserved, their flaming manes becoming damp with enough water to weigh its head down. Oh, that's why he's, he's kind of like slouched over. He's kind of cute. I mean, I'd have to go for the Fire Fairy in terms of just styling, though. But again, I'm loving the stories behind these altered versions. All right, and we have Bub Beat for our water type starter. It looks like Water Bug to start out. 
But Vita are quite selfish, only doing what they want. They will often throw tantrums when they are being ignored or bored. The water they store in the tube like parts of its body help it float. Oh, he's got a little inner tube. I love that. He's adorable. So, Bubble Beetle. Bubby. Alright, and Bubby evolves into Bubrawl. I'm so good with the names here. Bubrawl are very prideful, only fighting when they feel they need to prove themselves. When they feel insulted, they can't help but take on fights they know they can't win, fighting in rage. And he's got inner tubes for water wings now. I, I love this dude. Let's see the final one. And the names continue to be awesome. We have Bubalucha, water fighting type. Bubalucha fill their massive body with water, moving with the flow, giving more power to many of its attacks. Although friendly by nature, they can be very competitive and enjoy to make a good show for all those who watch, often dishing out incredibly strong and flashy attacks. Uh... <laughs> Just great design on these guys, honestly. Um, just so so fun to look at and be so fun to play with, I feel. All right, we have our Bubalucha Alter version. We've gone to grass fighting now. So for Bubalucha, trading its water for grass. Yep, same, same as before. We get our two abilities boosted. Uh, so... When it changes into its alter form, Bubalucha become ruthless fighters, striking at enemies with the foliage of their bodies, often antagonizing opponents to secure a win. So, <laughs> it's the good guy, bad guy side of wrestling, right? He's This guy's more the antagonist, whereas the other guy is more supposed to be the hero. Uh, so good, so good. Next, we have this adorable little dude, Miss Missilis? Mis miscellaneous lizard. Missiliz. Gotcha. Foreign species that no one knows exactly how it arrived. Its DNA seems to adapt depending on the region it lives in, changing its development. Okay, I feel like this is one that they're going to play around with, like, the typing and the regions and stuff like that on. He's adorable by default. I love him. And from there, we evolve into Shamaliz, ground psychic. Uh, God, the names are so good. Uh, Mesaliz in the Mahava region will evolve into Shamaliz. They use their incredible intellect to evade and trick its predators. They can regrow their staves if they are lost. Okay, <laughs> classic. Uh, desert lizard stuff that it's got going on. But it does specifically say in this region, so I think that's where we're going to see like the typing change and style changes in the evolutions, maybe. All right, and next up we have Quiku. Quick cuckoo, <laughs> quick cuckoo. Uh, very good designs on all like the first stage. First stage is always meant to be like cute and adorable and they are nailing that with these. Quick cuckoo are always in a hurry. They run around near constantly, only stopping to eat, sleep and drink. Their bodies are covered in copious amounts of feathers. So they're, they're just go, 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 these little guys. From there, we evolve into Crag Six. Ground flying, interesting. Again, I always like those counter, counter types where Typically, one would counter the other, but instead we combine them into one. Uh, combination of Crag and Geococcyx. Roadrunner's scientific name. Okay, Crag Six. Interesting. Crag Six are infamously loud and obnoxious. They are constantly running down roads, mimicking the sounds of motorcycles. They appear mean, but have a heart of gold. Uh, leaning into the whole Roadrunner thing here. I really do enjoy that. Up next, we have prickly pine uh i feel like we didn't stretch too far on the name here but you know what i don't mind it's still cute prickly pine's bodies are covered in small spines the spine in their head are often used as a status symbol the largest with the most power <laughs> interesting <laughs> children often assume they are quite fast this is false oh so he's just he's just a little slow move in porcupine little guy he's adorable though i love him and from there, we evolve into Stoiquil, normal steel. Okay. Stoiquil act very tough and are very stern. They often are hard on young prickly pine, intending to help them toughen up. Oh, it's the tough parent. And he doesn't look, he doesn't look nice. You know what? Looking at them side by side, I can see how this would be like the angry mom trying to keep, keep the kid in place, right? They can throw their steel quills upon their arms up to 30 feet. Stoic 
Stoquil. 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 Nice. All right, next up we have Pitifowl, who... Pitiful, Pitifowl, I get it. He's sad. It's... The whole thing is sad. Pitifowl often try to hide away from sight, afraid for others to see their drab feathers. Oh, little guy. If someone sees it, they will rapidly kick up sand to hide and run away. <laughs> I love, oh God, I love him. Okay, from there we have Pomplume. Pompous, Pomplume. Yeah, pomp Pompous Plumage, Pomplume. Got you, yeah, he's gained a little confidence here. Due to heavy amounts of preening and upkeep, male pomploon tend to have a large ego. They hate having their feathers rustled and will attack anyone who dare to mess with their plumage. Okay. So they're, they're, I mean, we have the different colors here for male and female, but they're actually making specific differences in the uh, Pokedex here between them as well, giving us a little, little lore. All right, then we move into re Regaliance. Regal... Galliforms? Galliformis? And Gallant. Sorry, I'm reading the name. Regal Regaliant. Regaliant. Fairy flying. Okay, interesting. Regaliant are entirely male, using their glistening feathers to attract attention. They have a very uptight personality, constantly keeping their feathers in check whilst they flight. <laughs> so, went from being this sad little guy who's just got no confidence in himself to just being this hoity-toity flying around just constantly checking himself out would probably carry a, carry a mirror with him if he could <laughs> gotta stay humble buddy gotta stay humble all right next up we have infestic bug poison classic typing infestic's body is very weak health wise body is ridden with many diseases. Without proper care, an infestic can become very sad, but those who are given proper care shall thrive. I mean, it's a tick. I don't think many people are going to try too hard to take care of a tick, but when it's your Pokemon, sure. From there, we evolve into Kokovery. Okay. Recovering from the sickness. Got you. Kokovery. Kokovery's bodies are constantly Recovery's bodies are covered in thick bandage-like silk. They're constantly in a state of healing to rid their bodies of their countless illnesses. They require much care to stay healthy. I love how much thought is put into some of these evolution lines and stuff. Uh, just is so creative. So it's such a good job. All right, and then we have Vaxquito. <laughs> so we've lost the poison typing now because it's not sick anymore. It's just gone normal. And it's a bug with a needle giving you a vaccine, very relevant in today's days. But this is, <laughs> I, I, like I said before, it's just the, the thought that goes into this is absolutely brilliant. Mosquito's large abdomen holds a cure-all liquid developed from the diseases they carried in youth. They're often used by nurses to assist in preventing disease for those in need. So, I, I, I love this idea. All right, so we have an alternate evolution here. So the last one was uh, leveled up through friendship. This one is just the standard leveling. So if you didn't get the level high enough, instead of curing everything, it becomes a ghost type and it dies. Masquerte. Because it's dead. That's... I... It's brilliant. It's so simple, but it's it's brilliant. Uh, Mosquerte's bodies are underdeveloped and gangly. They sustain themselves by draining the life force of people and Pokemon. They can drain a Snorlax of its bodily fluids dry in mere minutes. What? This thing is hostile. Some killer mosquitoes or something. Next up, we have Chihuabra. Yeah, Chihuahua and Chupacabra. Chihuahua. <laughs> Chihuahua are very mean and ill-tempered for their size. They will yap and snarl at anything they don't like. This often lands them in fights with Pokemon they can't win against. <laughs> you know, my mom has a Chihuahua. They get a bad rap. They're not all these yappy, evil little things. Uh, it really depends on the owner. A lot of times the 
owners are those kinds of people, and thus their dog becomes that. But not all chihuahuas are like that. But I, I, I like the leaning into the evil little dark dog guy. So next up for our evolution, we have Cabriablo. Okay, Cabriablo move mostly during the night, sneaking into farms and draining the livestock of their fluids. A lot of fluid draining going on here, okay. When they finish off they, their prey, they leave them completely dry, drained from their life force. So I think that's the Chupacabra lore, right? Is it like, like eat the chickens or something and like suck them dry or something like that? So we're, we're leaning into that, that lore here for this Pokemon. Next up, we have this adorable little dude, Nezudaguru. Nezumi, Denki, and Kangaroo. Nezudaguru. Nezudaguru. I think, I think we're doing that right. Nezudaguru. Uh, they appear small and friendly, but this is a ruse. They're deceptive and quick, stealing food and shiny objects, then quickly lashing out with painful lashes from its long whip-like tail. <laughs> <laughs> I like this little this little mischievous guy. He's cute. After that, we have Kernikid. Kernikid wander together in groups, patrolling the grasslands of Mahavo. They wish to protect the weak and will throw themselves at fights they know they can't win to help other Pokemon. Oh, he's he's a trooper. He just wants to help everybody out. We appreciate it, little fella. And we have Soul Deer, grass fighting type. All right, he's gotten a little tougher. Soldier's arms are sharp as blades. They are capable of cutting steel with a single strike. When they find a weakened ally, they will defend them till they can't fight any longer. Razor leaves from this must really hurt. All right, now we have Floroma, fairy grass. Okay, I love seeing like more fairies and, and stuff like that coming in, bringing in some of those interesting typings. Floroma, Floroma are extremely ditzy and sweet. They have a sweet smell and leave drops of tasty chocolate-like substance. Chocolate-like. Maybe I shouldn't be that excited. As they bounce around, the goo falls off, making for a tasty treat. Okay, apparently it's edible and it is tasty. Best friends, I would keep one of these around for sure. All right, and we have Amoroma. Oh, and it's the strawberries with the chocolate. Oh, yes. This falls through friendship. Interesting. Amor Amoroma are extremely sweet in both taste and personality. It is said if a couple shares a taste of the sweet chocolate, its secrets on Valentine's Day, they will be together forever. Also, it's a it's a romantic Pokemon. I get it. So, the first stage is just like the strawberry dip in chocolate, and then this is the evolution. So when you're eating it, are you eating the babies? It's a little disturbing. All right, next up we have Adaptile. I like this little guy. Their bodies are constantly adapting to its surroundings. Even the slightest stimuli will cause a change in behavior. Evolution can only be sparked with extreme conditions. Interesting, so depending on region or maybe there's like weather happening in different areas of the map they evolve into different things i can get behind that all right so we have samagama fire dragon type so this is an evolution of the previous one sumagama have only ever been found in the summer they lie in wait under the hot sand for prey to approach when agitated they flare up their mouths and shoot magma with a boom sunny weather in summer so yeah it's, like i said it's going to be based on what the weather is in the actual like overworld it seems interesting all right we have haruzard keeping the dragon typing but we're going grass this time instead i kind of like the design of this guy honestly uh so Har haruzard are haruzard only appear in spring basking in the sun they use their large frills to draw in prey and eat them. They are far closer to plants than animals. It is said that each frill color has different skills. Interesting. Okay, let's see what other forms this guy's got. All right, we have Denkaki. Denki and Aki. Denkaki, yeah, nailed it. So we're going electric dragon this time. 
Uh, so yeah, the last one was in clear weather, by the way. So now we're looking at stormy weather for this one. Denkaki only evolved during the harsh thunderstorms of Mahalo's fall. They release electricity from their mouths and tails, often lashing out with quick successive electrifying attacks. I mean, that's always a trait for uh, biting type Pokemon, right? They're always quick. So He looks like one of those uh, lizards that like can't pursue the desert really fast, so that makes sense. And we have Moninter, like the monitor lizard. Oh, Moninter, Monitor and Winter. So good. Water Dragon. All right, so this is in the rainy weather. Uh, Moninter are only found in Mahavo's winter. They often can be found. They often can be found in the overflooded lakes from Mahavo's rainy season. Despite their large size, they are quite kind and gentle. He looks happy. I like him. We have Dust Mutt, a ground type. I love this little guy already. Dust Mutt stay clear to the ground, stay near to the ground to catch as much dirt as it can in its coat. When it feels threatened, it will take off, leaving only a cloud of dust in its wake. Yeah, I love this little guy. Let's see what he evolves into. Soy Lobo. Okay, interesting. Soy Lobo are always covered in countless amounts of dirt. Moving low to the ground, they will attempt to kick sand into the eyes of any opponent. So this guy's going to be spamming sand attack. Lovely. They are often blamed for the disappearance of livestock. Okay. Well, I mean, the guy's got to eat, right? Looks like coyote-ish, so it makes sense. And our final form, Prowl Lobos. Okay, this guy looks awesome. Prowl Lobos disguise themselves perfectly as Soy Lobo, using this disguise to wreak havoc with little consequence. Incredibly rare and incredibly elusive. Its existence is not widely known in Mahavo. I really like the design of him. He looks cool. So, okay, I see. So he kind of like folds up underneath. He's meant to look like the Soy Lobo. But in actuality, he like stands up and gets all big. I kind of like the idea of that. All right, we have Dreaminy, the dream catcher, psychic fairy. Dreaminy are said to be born from dreams, needing to consume dreams for energy. With its large gem-like eye, it's capable of seeing the dreams of others, consuming only the bad dreams. Interesting. Let's see what he evolves into. I'm sure it's going to look very nice. Night Snare. Okay, it's just kind of gotten a little bigger. We got the two little little ones on the side. Night Snare. Filter dreams, consuming and storing negative dreams as energy, leaving the host with only good dreams. Due to this, Night Snare's bodies are very unstable, unleashing all of the energy when broken. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Well, we don't want to see it break. That would mean it dies, right? We're not gonna we're not gonna think too much about that. Right, then we have Night Snare. Okay, so this is when it breaks, I see. We've gone Dark Fairy, and it's like all the spirits coming out of it. Night Stare, when broken, shift into Nightmare Form. Interesting. Nightmare Form. Skash's body is made of Nightmare Mist, constantly moving and changing shape. It often wears the face of Ghost-type Pokemon. Where's the face of ghost type Pokemon, but it is a dark. Oh, that's Ghastly. Or Gengar. One or the other. But that's, you recognize that face. All right, and we have Hauntlet. I love the name. I love the design here, too. It's very cute. Hauntlet like to scare their prey before they strike, often crawling around dark alleys and rooms before licking the fear off them with their long tongues. They enjoy hiding under beds. Looks like just a mischievous little little dude that would uh, he'd haunt you for fun, right? He's not hostile, but he's just he's just playing around. From there, we evolve into Dualahand, Ghost Psychic. Okay, Dualahand are often abandoned. Often Dualahand often make abandoned buildings their home, trapping anyone who may enter. Uses its odd biology to mimic sounds to frighten its prey until it is ready to feed on their fear. Yeah, he definitely got a lot more hostile and buff too. Like once he's got some arms, the guy's kind of ripped, I'm not gonna lie. And then we have Necromanos. Awesome design on this. I really love the uh, the idea behind this with the eyes on the hands and just the big old mouth and tongue. Very interesting. 
Necromanos followed their prey in the shadows, reading their minds to manipulate its target. Despite its body having such a large mouth, it has no stomach and appears to only eat fear. Very cool. All right, now we have Grime Mouse. Poor little guy. He looks kind of, he's kind of got a little smirk going on. He doesn't seem to mind too much about being dirty. Grime Mouse live in the sewers of Mojave. They're shaggy fur dragging the muck and grime. These, in ancient times, these Pokemon carried a great plague to the region of Galar. Oh. Okay, so you don't really want to interact with them too much. He's cute, though. All right, from there we evolve into Corrodents, and we've got the poison type. This guy is really creepy looking. Corrodent live in the sewers of Mojave, dragging their hair and dirt, hair through dirt and muck, causes it to have a poisonous stench. Although normally highly intelligent, the toxins they consume poison their brains. Yeah, he looks a little delirious. I'm not gonna lie. They they definitely captured that in the design. All right, and then we have Scooter. Water poison. I like this little dude. Uh, scooters live within the sewers of Mojave, lying patiently in wait of any garbage to make its meal. They have a very strong bite capable of busting tires with a single good chomp. So I, it seems like we're going to be moving through some sewers or something in this game to get a lot of these guys. There's been a couple different sewer references here. I guess this is what you find down there. All right, there we go into Garbodile, Water Poison. Garbodile have, Garbodile are the scourge of Mojave cities. They often come out of the sewers to raid dumpsters. They often attack and consume Trubbish that stray too close to the sewers. I was gonna say he kind of looks like Trubbish with this like gunk on his back. Maybe that's just the remains of one. I don't know. All right, Trash Trashicus. Tra trash, 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 shish, sark, sark. I'm sorry. So the name here is Trash and Sarko Suchus. Trash, We're going to go with that. Trashuchus have extremely strong stomach acid, enough so that, that it can eat just about anything it can get its jaws on. Sludge covered hide serves as perfect camouflage in the sewers where they dwell. Yeah, he's definitely gotten a lot more hostile. He's just kind of covered this black goop. Ugh. And now we have Snoblin. Kudos again on the name here. Uh, these Pokemon constantly have a runny nose. Their, sneeze, their sneezes leaving anything in front of it frozen solid. They can often be seen maintaining their horns, comparing them to other Snoblin for an ego boost. <laughs> well, he looks a little sad. He could use a little ego boost. And then we have Snowny. So, Snowny swaddle themselves in their own fur to drive off the cold, contradictory to the nature of their ice type. When they feel threatened, they can freeze over their snot, making for a rather gross weapon. Yeah, that doesn't sound too appealing. And we have Snogger, ice fighting. Okay, I like this guy. <laughs> I like his mean, mean teeth and his mean grin there. Snogger use their frozen snot like clubs. Oh, that's a booger and he broke it off oh my god bashing anything and everything until they fracture their skin is incredibly cold a single touch can leave one's hand near frozen solid wow that, that that's so that's just one big old booger that's not something that you want to get near probably i don't yeah i don't want to deal with that all right and that is going to be it for our first video on the mahavo region thank you so much for watching we will see you in the next one have a great day.